Hello, my name is Scott. Welcome back to Adrenaline Fueled Firearms. Uh, earlier, I did a 2023 reloading video and I kind of teased about the use of reloading for cartridges that are difficult to find. And I did mention 8.6 black, so what I want to do right now is go through a quick rundown on reloading 8.6 black using a powder other than what Faxon has on their website, which has been provided by Q. Q has their chart using Accurate 1680. I couldn't get my hands on any Accurate 1680, so what I tracked down, or what I already had actually, was Hodgkin CFE Black. I uh, use this for my 300 Black and several other calibers, and I really like the powder, plus it's also only two burn speed positions on the chart away from the Accurate. So. I've already done my load development, I've already shot my rounds, and I've done some reloading on it. Uh, it's very difficult to get the 8.6 ammunition from Gorilla because they are currently the only ones producing it. And they've had, I'm going to be generous and say five runs this year. I'm not really sure they've done, but three or four. I've managed to order on two. I've got approximately 140 rounds of Genuine Q Brass from my Gorilla ammo that I've already expended. So I've had to go around and come back and start reloading. So, I worked up my load developments with my crony. Um, speaking of crony, by the way, Q mentions don't use low quality bullets. I'm gonna go a step further and say don't use anything except all copper bullets. I attempted to use a 210 grain nozzle or partition and I'm now done with my load development because I no longer have a functional crony. Uh, the bullet came apart coming out of the barrel and no more crony. Rest in peace. So, we have several loads that I've developed, and I have some commercial ammo, but there's your 8.6 black. It's uh, developed by Q based on a 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge. I'm not sure why they went with a 6.5 Creedmoor cartridge instead of a 308 cartridge. They're very similar. I actually have someone locally who has a lot more experience than me with reloading and with cartridge reshaping, who's looking at reworking some 308 cartridges into 8.6 black cartridges. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. He's also doing some 6.5 Creedmoors for me. I haven't seen where anyone's done anything other than 6.5 Creedmoor and I like to F around so we're going to see what happens. It may not go well but you have your Supersonics. Uh, this is a 338 caliber 210 grain TSX boat tail by Barnes. Um, <laughs> hard to get. So is well, basically everything nowadays. We all know how that is. 300 grade subsonic loads that I worked up myself. Uh, again, using Genuine Q brass. Uh, my projectiles are <laughs> Midway factory overrun, 300 grains. So I'm not sure whose factory they overran from, but again, it's what I could get. I've also got some loaded 185 grain Hornady CX that I managed to find and work up load developments for, and I have uh, 20 or 40 rounds of that worked up already and ready to go. Hey, hey, let's make shit go flying. Awesome. Here's your Hornady, also all copper bullet, except it has your uh, plastic aerodynamic tip, uh, ballistic tip, I believe Hornady technically calls that thing. So I have basically three different loads that I've currently effectively worked up. My Subsonics are sitting on 14 grains of CFE black. My supersonic 210 grain TSXs are sitting on 31 grains of CFE black, which I have set out here. I'm going to actually load one. And then my Hornady's 185 grain are sitting on 33 grains of CFE black. Um, I went off their loading chart to get my velocities. I have no idea what my chamber pressures are, but so far it hasn't blown up in my face. And based on the fact that I fired the Gorilla ammunition, which I'm assuming is sitting on top of the Accurate 1680, and <laughs> well, while shooting I noticed that the Gorilla ammunition was really a stiff recoil uh, compared to what I was doing, going off their chart and looking for my velocities. Well, the Gorilla ammunition velocity is 3,000 feet per second shooting the 210 TSX, whereas Hornady's chart is more in the 2000 range or an extra 50% velocity. 
So I've kind of made the assumption that I do have a little bit of fudge factor. Uh, hopefully later someone will do some more work, some more load developments, and we'll see how far we can push the pressures to maybe get a little more velocity. But I felt safe stopping there. I have an AR style rifle that I'm shooting from. It functions properly and doesn't eat my brass once I got all my loads worked up. Uh, yeah, basically I'm down to 132 now since I've fudged several. And uh, it's been a fascinating experience because I'm relatively new to reloading. So there's also this. I managed to accordion around. That was really fun. And double check your measurements and your stroke on your ram. <clears throat> yeah, I just pause so that you can insert your dirty stroke, your ram jokes in there because I like humor as much as the next guy, if not more. So 31 grains, Barnes TSX. My brass is prepped. I've got my bullets laid out in my loading tray. I've already got my Federal large primers. I run Magnum as opposed to standards because I'm lazy and I don't like trying to find Magnum and standard and then find a place for them on my already finely cluttered glorious reloading area so everything I wrote reload magnum primers so I am going to run from the RCBS charge master link this is their basic powder dispenser I've already got my 31 entered get my first charge running I will not be using my standard Hornby manual dispenser because as I stated in my first video I'm not super overly impressed with where it's at one round of already pressed, prepped brass with its primer inserted. And our CBS says we have a load, so we will load our brass. Set it back in, it'll automatically prep our next powder charge. Insert shell into the shell holder, shell holder number one for Hornady, because again, it is 308, 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a number one shell holder. Take our Barnes TSX 210, insert it into the top of the shell, gently bring it home, bring it down. Next charge is already ready. One round, 8.6 black, ready to go. So, all this brass is, as I said, previously used in re prepped brass. We'll take that out, and if I'm lucky, I won't blow my face off. I'm gonna put insert here. Do not go just straight off my powder loads. I'm running my powder situated, loaded in 32% humidity. My powder's been sitting in the dispenser for a little while. My, based on my altitude at temperatures and everything else, burn rate may vary. Q has helpfully put in your little tip on here to go 10% above or 10% below. So with supersonics, you want to go 10% below so that you don't have your overly high pressures and hopefully won't blow your face off. And subsonics, 10% above so that you don't hopefully have a stuck projectile in your barrel, which again will result in you blowing your face off. There are a lot of sources online for your various hardware and other things very few sources so far for your 8.6 black because it is a new projectile. Uh, I am really really hoping that this takes off. I've really enjoyed shooting it so far and as far as the reloading it, if I can do it, darn near any numbskull can do it because I have very little experience with reloading so far. Uh, I've worked with some websites and some local businesses that deal with reloading to get a little bit of advice on the items I need and everything else. As always with all my videos, I do recommend that you do a lot of research on your own. Go to a lot of different websites. Hopefully actually speak to some people face to face. Make some notes, make your plan, and execute. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming in here onto YouTube and viewing my video and listening to me run my mouth and tell you dumb crap that you probably hopefully already know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you again, or hopefully you'll see me again, on my next YouTube